welcome to money 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 it's that sparkling time of the year again diwali is just a few days away which is why we've been bringing you the festive series on money 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 and this week it's time to turn the spotlight on the shiny yellow metal yes gold which is why we're actually here at the tanish store in bandra west the question is is gold really worth the investment is it worth your time your energy your effort and most importantly your money will it fetch you handsome returns it's been a great year for gold investors will that trend continue to help us answer most of those questions we've got two special guests joining us on the show of course our personal finance expert harsh rungta is with us harsh great to have you on the show as always and also we have chirag mehta of quantum amc chirag welcome to the show so you know i'll start with the basics first price trend wise it's been a fabulous year for gold right though we are off what 7 8% from the peak nevertheless we're talking about an appreciation of almost 19 to 20% do you expect that to continue uh see it was given that gold price has been suppressed for last 3 4 years on a continuous basis now gold has moved up uh, after the first fed rate hike that was uh so it was speculation driving gold lower that fed rate hike is going to come and eventually when it came gold started moving up Uh, so we are out of speculation back to fundamentals and that is why gold prices are going up uh, if you see uh, the factors driving gold are uh, central bank policy making lower rates for a longer period negative rates now so that is creating a big backlash against policy making people are fearful there's more uncertainty and that is why gold is in demand but what what explains the recent price drop this decline that we've seen in the past few weeks again it's the fed rate hike talks the mm. chatter behind the fed rate hikes is uh, moving up mm. and causing more uncertainty and speculation driving gold so the dollar moves down. higher and therefore in, usually the dollar and gold are inversely correlated yes right? yes yeah. so fed has to save face now because they have at the start of the year they said four rate hikes now they are down to two and now to one mm. so last three months if they don't trade high rates now Hmm. they're going to lose face and credibility with the investors okay yeah. so now that's a lot about the central bank movement and the overall speculation in the market what about real demand and supply uh, how do you view how global etfs gold etfs are doing is money still coming in uh, and how does view uh, how does one view demand because india's demand has been growing down we've been importing less gold in the last couple of months so in the gold market it's usually a two hand approach one is the investment demand one is the physical demand physical demand usually serves as a floor to gold prices and investment demand is what takes the gold prices up this year we had the investment demand in full swing and physical demand mediocre or lower uh, that is why india has not participated much so we think the, there are few reasons why indian demand has been lower one is unofficial gold imports coming in uh, real interest rates positive in india that's a big positive people moving from uh, physical assets like real estate and gold to financial assets yeah. and that's why demand is lower yeah. so uh, we think demand will come people are becoming uh, comfortable with prices at these kind of levels uh, whenever we have volatility in prices people shy away from buying gold mm. uh, so now with prices stabilizing at these levels i think demand for gold is going to be much larger and this diwali is going to be a very good diwali for gold market okay all right so harsh let me get you in the conversation as well from a personal finance angle what's the importance of gold in the portfolio how much gold should you have what's the thumb rule i mean do you go by age do you go by your investment horizon or your investment objectives how do you decide so i mean if you were to talk about gold i mean you, you can might as well talk about equity you might as well talk about debt i think every asset class hmm. has its place yeah. in an investor's portfolio uh, in india if we, if we pick up india and we talk of a normal investor uh definitely gold should be part of his portfolio mm-hmm. if for nothing else mm-hmm. the fact that eventually we will use gold for social things i mean your kids are going to get yeah. married yeah. so i mean because there is a social use of that gold i like that term social use i think in the indian context you hear that there gold has a social use very much so absolutely it's it's yeah. not really an investment yeah. okay yeah. if you if you give that i think uh, doing a 5 10% allocation to gold so it's it's like any other allocation decide your allocation mm. right if you're bullish on gold maybe that's 10% mm. okay uh, if you're not that bullish it still needs to be 5% okay okay the key is how you build it yeah i think uh, this uh, thing about for a normal investor this thing about uh, 
the factors that affect the day to day price for a normal normal investor who's investing for the long term and typically that's how indian investors are ah, I mean, they're not I mean, really looking at very quick returns or quick trades a, in in gold in their it's, gold it's a buy it yeah. keep it forget it kind yeah, of an yeah. investment if you're doing that mm. do you really want to bother about where interest rates are going where equity rates are going you look at say a much wider horizon you look at 30 years you look at 40 years mm. okay i mean people look at 100 years yeah their gold clearly i mean has proven as a hedge against inflation mm. even after taking tax into account mm. you have very high single digit returns in india mm. roughly 9 9 and a half percent if you take tax into account then you take pure uh, in, sure. uh, investment for uh, a 10 year cycle mm. so now let me ask you this it, it's quite important to to know that obviously gold has a place in the portfolio the next critical question does jewelry investment or do jewelry purchases uh equal gold investment or do you need to invest over and above what you want to buy uh you know in terms of your jewelry likes this diwali so i think there are two uh, uh two things to that both for and against i think one is uh for most people what is say core jewelry i mean we we hear of jewelry being passed from generation to generation that obviously is not an investment you're never going to sell it unless literally somebody is dying and you need the money you never going to sell that jewelry so that can hardly be called an investment mm. if you take that out that's not investment mm. if you take the rest out then there is only one way in which you can call it an investment that i that say the current generation buys that jewelry uses it and then swaps it mm. jewelry is very easily swappable mm. right so you you swap it okay. right later yeah. when you want your children to use yeah. it etc or you yourself want to change what you are wearing and yeah. that that's quite frequent yeah yeah just remember it's a very inefficient it's very way. inefficient exactly the costs yeah. are huge yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's a very inefficient way of investing mm -hmm. of Typically course you will end up losing i mean how much if you're thinking that you know you're going to mix a little bit of pleasure and investment by buying jewelry right. then how high are the inefficiencies so i think there are two inefficiencies one are the Uh, taxes and the making charges mm -hmm. right and second uh, is the un undisclosed impurity mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. i think the second inefficiency is slowly vanishing with yeah. hallmarking etc yeah. coming in yeah. which was a very and major a cost large sellers coming into the market people like tanish hallmark, people like yeah, tanish yeah, very yeah. clearly there is a huge amount of credibility yeah. attached yeah. to that but the first inefficiency clearly remains i mean you take your jewelry out of the showroom you want to bring it back and take cash yeah. you're out 20 25% so well on that note let's take a quick break but we've only just gotten started the question is if you want to buy gold this diwali which are the best instruments you can look at we're going to be breaking down the differences between the sovereign gold bonds as well as gold etfs what's the preferred route find out after the break